Introduction to Auto-Identifying Albums with Song Kong Music Tagger So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Song Kong to auto-identify albums in your music collection. I have set up some test data. We have two albums Get a Blaster by David Guetta and High and Dry by Def Leppard. And as you can see, we have removed all the metadata from the files and renamed the files to just contain the track number. To keep it simple, we only have two albums, but it demonstrates a key difference with Song Kong and other music taggers. We don't have to work on one album at a time, we can fix them all in one go. So let's go into Song Kong and select the Fix Songs task. Just select the default profile. A profile is a predefined configuration of options, and for most customers in most situations, the default profile works fine. So let's start and we have the chance to modify the options. But we are not going into them in this tutorial, except the first time you use the Fix Songs task it runs in preview mode, so you don't modify anything by accident. So let's just uncheck that option, so it actually makes some changes. Select Start, and now the task begins. Song Kong uses a number of different methods and databases to identify the albums. We can see in the file window the metadata being added, as the changes are saved. When Fix Songs completes it generates a very detailed report from where we can see a summary and exactly what has been changed. So in the summary we can see 25 songs loaded and all the songs were matched to Music Brains and Discogs, artwork added and because all files have been modified, all have been saved. Music Brains and Discogs are the two main music databases that we use to source metadata we can then drill down into the individual files with the browse menu. Use browse by artist slash album groups the songs by their artist and album metadata. We can see we have two artists, each with one album. If we select an album, we can see all the tracks in the album, together with their basic metadata, including track number, album, artist and title. We also have a link to the matching Music Brains or Discogs album if we have one. Please note, the actual file names have not changed. This is because this is done by the rename files task. We talk about that in a subsequent tutorial. If we select a track, then we can see all the metadata within the track. Metadata added is in yellow. If we scroll down the metadata added includes artist and album artist and their multi-value versions artists and album artists. We have front cover artwork, composer and credits information. Links to Discogs is classical, is compilation and is greatest hits flags. Lots of links to Music Brains identifiers, mood metadata from Acoustic Brains and sort fields. We can also browse by folder. This browses the song by the folder structure. Very useful if for some reason the files are not stored in matching album artist and album folders. We can see all the metadata, one line per file by using the view metadata as spreadsheet option. The spreadsheet is very useful for viewing our whole collection in one place without having to drill down. There are a number of different tabs that group similar metadata fields, and of course we can make use of the spreadsheet's capabilities, such as find and replace. And we have a record of the options used on the Options tab. The Errors and Warnings tab shows any errors that occurred when running the task. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this tutorial useful. 